Ashley team for the second game. Well, we said this was going to be uh, an interesting encounter. Neither of us particularly wanted to call it, Chris, but I would have to say that just asking around the crowd, and there's probably a certain, a certain amount of home favouritism as well, but most people coming down on the side of Paul Moore in this game. Well, anybody that's watched Paul Bowl over the last couple of years on this lane has to make him a favourite even in an even match. He's just bowled so well on this lane and really everywhere in Europe for the last two, three years that uh, he, get, he wins tiebreakers based on experience and, uh, and his record. I must admit, when I talked to him last year and said, what are the main things that you're looking to get out of this year's tournament? And this, remember, having made the final the previous year, he said, in all honesty, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find Chris Barnes, sit down for a coffee, and I'm going to talk 10 pin bowling with him. So did he do that? <laughs> we sat down and talked a little bit, uh, mostly through jabs back and forth. But uh, <laughs> I think he wants to exact a little bit of revenge if he gets the chance. Uh, uh, I I'm not sure I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there, so I got another one of those those dang two-handers. <laughs> yes, Mr. Belmonte awaits you in the semi-final. That's going to be interesting, but uh, he dealt with Oscar Palermo pretty well, and he played some, some great balls. Well, both these players are fantastic, and, and to think that they're 23 right now is... Oh, it's frightening. Frightening. It is. I'm, I'm glad that I'm taking advantage of some some opportunities now because I'm not sure how much longer I can keep up. Alex Liu, a bit unfortunate here, he's left the bucket. A couple of sleepers to deal with here. She's going to leave it, this is the place, but that ball got wide of target again and just there's too much oil down lane for it to climb up over it. Nice work. Well, you mentioned uh, getting older in the sport Chris and uh, I guess you your ideas change the things that drive you on in the sport change as well don't they well it becomes a balance too because you have uh, for myself I have you know wife and kids and and there's a, a much stronger desire to be around home uh, at, at 23 at the age these guys were I, I was traveling around the world and doing all that home is just where the next bed is basically and uh, uh, you enjoy all the travels and, and soak in all the experiences and, and gain loads and loads of experience. And these guys, these guys are getting a lot of it early, and they are way more talented than anybody I've seen at their age. Yeah, it's a very different world these days in uh, the sport of temp in bowling. 90 countries plus entered into the last World Cup. It just shows you that the, uh, the peel and the uh, spread of the sport is reaching worldwide. As Paul Moore doubles up, it's looking very good now for him. Well, you could tell he actually missed the pocket within the last couple of shots. He almost watched that one all the way to the pins before he knew it was a strike, so. <laughs> He's a real scholar, his Paul. He'll glean any bit of information he can. Oh, dear. Well, we're getting pretty close to last chance saloon now for Alex Leo, aren't we? Yes, he's... And he doesn't look very comfortable right now. The last shot was light. This shot looks really good. He's pretty surprised that that didn't go high flush and, and get him a leg up on the, the 11 bagger that I think he needed. Well, that just shows you the quality of this tournament. You're talking about needing 11 baggers to win games. Paul Moore comes out. He's uh, on for a 5-6-5 if he strikes out from here. And that's going to be a 62-pin advantage come the end of this match. So Alex Liu has to start striking. That's for sure. Paul Moore is going to have to make a couple of mistakes. And uh, at the moment, you can't see that happening. I think the good part for Paul is he's further right than Alex is right now, which means his laydown area won't change much. He shouldn't see too many more moves from the rest of the match. Yeah, he liked it right from the off. And once again, he's back to not having to look at the ball going into the pins. Just rock solid when he posts up shots like that. It's not very many mistakes. As we said, a very consistent character. 
He's the same day in, day out, whenever you see him, and that benefits him out on the lanes. Alex Liu, very similar in personality, but he's just not getting the breaks at the moment. But uh, I think he'd probably be the first to acknowledge he's, he's not bowled particularly well either. Well, that and Paul has forced his hand significantly. He's, he made a ball change here, knowing that he has to throw pretty much all the rest of the strikes to, ha to have a chance. And all you can do at this point is make your best guess. And that's a pretty good shot, but it hooked a little more than he thought. He picks up another spare, but uh, it's a pretty lonely place for him up on that stage at the moment. What the PBA make of Paul Moore? Well, it certainly wouldn't be mincemeat. Uh, <laughs> you know, Paul's got tons of game, and, and he is every bit as talented as the players on the PBA Tour. Uh, when Jason Couch came over here for the Weber Cup, uh, Paul got the best of him most of the time here. And those two players certainly have some distinct differences in their games, but Paul is, is good enough to beat anybody out there, uh, especially given a little bit of experience and some time to, to, to learn the transitions and the different things over there, as well as the travel and being in a, in a different country. And that's probably the biggest obstacle for him is finding someone to room with, uh, enjoy his time over there, and make it a little bit easier being so far away from home. Yeah, it's a pretty brutal environment. Everybody trying to win week in, week out. You're not going to get that much help. Paul Moore, though, puts away that spare and uh, just abolishes himself with a little tap on the leg. He wasn't happy uh, not uh, closing out for a four-bagger. At least Liu knows now that his opponent is infallible. He doesn't strike all the time. Just when he needs to. <laughs> That's it. Always important. You then can't buy a strike for love nor money at the moment. Another ball change. And that one hooked a lot less than the other one did. It's just and pure frustration, isn't it, Chris, at this point? And that's really the difference. When you're bowling at someone that, that is putting so much pressure on you, uh, the ball he was throwing, he probably could have shot you know, 470, possibly. Uh, kind of grinding. It wasn't the perfect ball, but it was close enough to shoot a pretty good number. But 470 is not going to be close to winning this match. Open frame for Alex Liu. That may have closed the lid on this one. I know there's a long way to go in this game. But uh, the destination is totally in Paul Moore's hands from now. Well, Paul only needs a 203 at this point with Alex. Alex's max score being 467 and Paul shooting 265 the first game. And Paul is already on a 219 pace. Yeah, the stats for Alex Liu, not what he would have wanted in this match. More than to try and get back on the strike trail. No, not going to happen this time. He's left the nine. Judging by the look on his face, he liked this shot quite a bit. It's another shot that it's picked up a little bit, and it's time to make probably his last move of the match. Another one board move to the right, and and from then on, he should be good to go. Comfortable spare, but that's two nine spares in a row for more, so his maximum aggregate score just dropping down a little but he still isn't really in any trouble in this match and Alex Liu has to ask some questions and it's got to start now well, you just feel for the guy don't you he went back to his original ball and looks like he moved left, trying to find a little bit more friction early in the lane. But both he and Paul started further to the right, so that portion of the lane is actually slicker now than when it started. Good effort. Just unlucky not to take out those uh, remaining pins, but the four and the seven stay standing. And Alex Liu with another open frame is in serious trouble and that's the problem with this uh, quick format 
it goes so fast and the players obviously realize very quickly that yeah, they're going to be going home a little sooner than you would in normal regulation temp in bowling well, he can't seem to find his way in a little surprised i thought that would be just a small move and and he looks surprised too eventually guess he did make the move and and saw even more friction than he anticipated but at this point, it's just a, a learning experience for both of them, and he'll take whatever he he gleans from these last couple of frames and applies it towards his next match, where he may bowl another left-hander. Dominic Barrett and Remy Ong involved in the last quarter-final. Another tough one to call. Dominic Barrett, uh, the young Englishman, coming through very well against a tough opponent from the USA. We've got to say something about uh, Deandra Aspati. What a performance from her. Yeah, she got off to a tough start that first game, and, and Dominic really took it to her with that 260, I think it was a 269 game right out of the, yep. right off the bat. And, uh, and he kind of let his foot up off the throttle for a minute, and Deandra came storming back, and she strikes out in the 10th frame. Dominic would have had to fill 19 pins in the 10th frame to, to win that match. Pretty amazing. It's all you can do, make your opponent play, and time and time again the bowlers will say, it's not about who you're playing, it's about how you play the lane, and, and we all know that, but Chris, it's, it's impossible to not recognize that there's an opponent on stage with you. Sure, and, you know, with a Paul Moore, there's, there's some history there that, that leads you to believe that 500 is, is kind of the number you have to shoot for to have a chance. And sometimes it can force your hand into into something that you didn't have to. You may only have to shoot 470 because you've you've made some mistakes pressing too hard or trying trying to go for too much when it's not there, and uh, you only shoot a 430 or 440 and get beat. Um, everybody in this field is so so talented, though, that uh, big strings are inevitable. I think regardless. It is not happening for either player at the moment. We are strikeless for, well, I make that eight frames now between the two of them. And that's just a bigger move, and he's finally gotten deep enough. At least he can afford to smile about it. It's not going to cost him anything in the match overall. You were talking about opponents for me. I, I find it very difficult to watch Asku or Jason when they bowl because they do things that none of the rest of us can do. Uh, their ball speeds are higher, their rev rates are higher. Uh, the height of the head pin when it comes flying across the lane to hit the 10 is higher. <laughs> yeah, we had a few triple somersaults from those pins, I tell you. I love watching a bowl, but not when they're bowling against me. No, no, I can understand that. Palermo and Belmonte, both double-handed players. Just a reminder that Belmonte will meet Chris Barnes in the first of our semi-finals. This is the bottom half of the draw. Our third quarter-final, Alex Liu of Malaysia up against England's Paul Moore. Paul Moore in pole position to progress through to the semi-final. And then we'll just have one more match to be decided in the quarter-final stages. Remy Ong versus another Englishman, Dominic Barrett. That's going to be a cracking game as well. Well, it's good to good to hear from our statsman Andy Penny, Chris, that Alex is still trying to make some changes there. He's still trying to work this lane. Yeah, this rev rate has gone up the last couple of shots. Uh, he has changed balls, and uh, that last ball he threw uh, seems to hook more. Seems to put him more in the same part of the lane as Paul. Uh, and had he made that decision earlier, it, maybe it would have it would have changed things a little bit. I mean, on paper, this is a fantastic matchup of last year's. Asian number one player and uh, Europe's number one ranked player. And this year Paul's currently number two, which I'm sure is just a formality that he'll try and take care of. And uh, Alex is number four, which I assume will also move up. Uh, ironically, Remy Ong is, is Asia's number one ranked player at the moment. Yeah, we said we got the cream of the crop here, and we certainly have. Well, you. Still try and make this lane work for him. And he responds to Paul Moore's strike in the previous shot just as well. But uh, boy, did he want that 10 frames ago. 
That's the maximums that both players can achieve. More on 5-11, Liu way down on 4-2-4. Four, four. So something pretty spectacular would have to happen to Paul Moore's game from here. If it was me out there finishing these last few frames, Liu would have a chance, but it's not. It's Paul Moore. No, actually he wouldn't. He's already shut out. <laughs> <laughs> Even tripping and falling won't, won't change this one. Home crowd enjoying this. They're going to see Paul Moore through to the semi-finals for the third year in a row. It's some record. It's providing quite a nice bit of supplemental income for him. <laughs> That's what it's about, though, isn't it? These deliveries are putting food on the table. And that's the, the bare facts of professional sport. You can't escape that, can you, Chris? No, no. It, uh, ultimately, that's what we're all trying to do is make a living out here. The thrill of competition keeps you coming back and keeps you practicing. But, uh, it's nice at the end of the day to, to be able to afford a flat, as it may be here. So. That's how it stands then, a golf between these two players. Moore will want to strike out from here. Uh, he likes the idea of sending messages back to the players that he's going to encounter in later rounds, whether they be in the green room or whether they be lane side watching him bowl. And he's certainly done that. There we go. Yeah, he's back in the groove again. That's a turkey for Moore. And that really looked like he caught a handful on this one. He, uh, his, his rev rate is going to be up a little bit. It got a little bit wide and it came off, came off the spot even harder than it did previously. That was a no doubter going through the pins. So this really a chance for more to relax. Might see just a touch of experimentation here, just to see what's happening. Pop that out, just a touch wider, did he? Great call. And that was, he looks like he moved five, six boards to the left scored up on uh, closer to the first arrow just to see what was out there and much like Alex when he moved out there it looked like it went a lot longer the difference being he was able to get it to climb the hill and, and tickle him down yeah, he still got his result well this will just build this young man's confidence even more his last ball <laughs> you don't see Paul Moore go coast to coast very often but a, a decent attempt <laughs> No, no, Paul, that's right at the big dot. We want to stay around that. <laughs> he is much more versatile than, uh, than most of the left-handers, and that's, that is part of his uh, advantage, is, is that he can play more parts of the lane, and he, he sees more, sees it better and makes adjustments faster. Yeah, he's got all the tricks, and he's used them there to great effect. 5.07 for more. It's going to be a win. And now for Alex Liu, I always feel, Chris, one of the toughest parts of this particular tournament if you're the guy that's uh, on the losing end you still have to bowl out your game well there's things to be learned and, and most times you learn much more from your defeats than you do from your victories uh, and Alex has kept working at it all the way through here and made made several different changes and he has a lot of heart one of the reasons he became the number one player uh, in the Asian rankings and uh, you know it gives him a fair chance to come back again yeah that's a nice way of looking at it you then to leave this crowd with something to remember him by. And he wouldn't have wanted it to be that, I'm afraid. Kind of more of the same. Uh, the, the tone of the day for Alex, unfortunately, is that uh, his small mistakes have been catastrophic in a, in a match where he couldn't afford very many. So Liu finishes things up. Applause from the crowd for the birthday boy but uh, it's not a birthday present for Alex Liu it's another place in the semi-finals instead for his opponent Englishman Paul Moore my thanks to Chris Barnes for joining me in the commentary booth hope you've had a good time Chris but it's Paul Moore that advances to the semi-finals so three of the four semi-finalists decided co-commentator Chris Barnes will play Australia's Jason Belmonte now England's Paul Moore is through and awaits the winner of the fourth and last quarter final join us again Remyong of Singapore against Englishman Dominic Barrett.